We also learned that full hair regrowth is actually possible even for people who have been bald for decades. And What is up guys and welcome back to Alpha Mode. Today I'm going to give a short introduction to microneedling, why it works and how I do it personally. First off, let's look at what microneedling is in general. Microneedling is a cosmetic procedure that is used to encourage growth factors producing using small sterilized needles to penetrate the skin. When you cause this kind of micro trauma to an area, a lot of signaling proteins and growth factors will be washed to the area to promote the start of the healing process. What we already know so far is that these kinds of traumas usually start a lot of different processes. Microneedling is a procedure that has been used for a very long time by females to reduce, reverse and even stop wrinkles from forming on their face and other places. Microneedling has even shown to be able to reverse some of the dark areas and spots on skin caused by exposure to the environment and aging over time. According to this review of 22 studies regarding microneedling as a treatment for hair loss, clinical studies demonstrate generally favorable results for microneedling as an adjunct therapy for androgen alopecia. And they also stated that a lot of the studies need some more strict guidelines and higher quality of studies. But it's still 22 studies with over 1,000 participants that made the conclusion that adjunct microneedling therapy for hair loss is definitely working. That review aside, also have a case study back from 1986. A 78-year-old bald man fell asleep in his rocking chair, slipped, then hit his head on the fireplace and suffered a full thickness burn across his whole scalp area. Six months later, he baffled his physicians when he returned to the hospital for his checkup with a full head of hair. Who would have thought that an accidental burn to the scalp could inadvertently trigger hair follicle regeneration? This single case report rewrote everything we had previously suspected about hair regrowth from androgenic alopecia. Contrary to the dogma repeated at the time we learned that hair follicles don't die. We also learned that full hair regrowth is actually possible even for people who have been bald for decades. And this discovery happened by accident because of an accident. Fascinatingly, signaling proteins and growth factors recruited during wound healing process share a significant overlap with pathways recruited for hair follicles proliferation. Now that we know a little about microneedling and how it works, and how well it works, we need to take a look at how you practice microneedling in a safe way to create the maximum regrowth and minimize your hair loss. First things first, derma roller or derma pen? And this is a very common question and I want to address it in the best possible way that I can. One, derma pens make a clean cut while derma rollers might cause some slightly bigger incisions and less clean cuts in your skin. Personally, I would rather prefer the clean insertions from the derma pen on the contrary to the derma roller and the more ripping kind of cuts it creates. I also have a small animation up here where you can see how the different derma pen and derma rollers actually create the incisions in your scalp. Two, you can't wash the derma roller, but you can change the cartridge on the derma pen after each use. Three. Derma pens are able to create a multitude of small incisions from the mechanics and will always have the depth you set it to on beforehand. Compared to the derma roller where you have to apply some kind of pressure and you might press too hard or not enough. So these three points might give you guys a good idea on what I prefer and why I use the derma pen. If you are about to ask in the comment section for a link to my derma pen, just check down below in the description. I have already posted a link down below to Amazon where you can get a good quality derma pen just like mine or you are completely free to go on Google, search for a derma pen or a derma roller, whatever you prefer 
and just get another one from there. Now let's say you don't have the money to spend a hundred bucks on a derma pen. Then I would definitely suggest that you go and get a derma roller for the time being until you can afford the upgrade. Personally, I started with the derma roller when I first wanted to give it a go. So it's not like it's going to ruin anything for you. I just personally don't think it's a good long-term solution to use the derma roller compared to the derma pen. Next part, how fast? How deep and how, how long should you go? Let's start with the first one. So the depth of microneedling procedures are still being discussed to a great extent. But here are some of the facts we know. One, the bigger the trauma, the bigger the response to a certain degree. Two, according to studies, 0.2 millimeters is the lowest setting that has yielded results so far. Three, the dermal papilla is about two to four millimeters deep in your skin on the head. So you want to create an effective trauma to the balding area. You don't want to go below 0.5 millimeters. And if you go above two millimeters, you risk of damaging the papilla, which is the base of your hair. Personally, I go for 1.5 millimeters when I microneedle myself. The rest is up to you. And this is usually how you adjust the depth on your microneedling device. Second, how fast should the setting be at? I find this question rather simple to answer. You don't want it to go so slow that you actually can feel the dragging of your skin when you move it. But on the same time, you don't want it to go so fast that it actually causes a burning sensation from all the friction. Now, what I just mentioned about friction would take an enormous amount of speed to create. So obviously, you can more or less only set it at a too slow speed. The faster it goes, the more punctures it creates on your scalp, the more punctures, the more effect. Once again, it's up to you. Personally, I set it to max speed and that's just how I do things. Third, how long should your sessions be? This is also one of the benefits of the Dermapen because I usually go for around 300,000 punctures every session. Whether I do, let's say 10,000 punctures a minute with three needles for 10 minutes, or let's say I do 5,000 punctures a minute with 12 needles for five minutes, which is the option that I chose. And I just wanna add this, any cartridge above 12 needles usually have a hard time getting through the skin due to the surface area being too big at that point. So I wouldn't recommend anything above 12 needles and I wouldn't go below, below six needles since that's just a waste of time. From this point on, you should be able to decide for yourself if you do believe in the science presented behind microneedling, if you want the derma roller or the derma pen, how deep should you set the derma pen or buy the derma roller at if you need that one, how fast should the setting be and how many needles would you like to use. Remember also the more needles, the more pain. So 12 needles might be a big of a stretch for some people. Guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope this gave you a basic idea on how microneedling works and what you can do by yourself and make your own choices. You know the drill. If you like this kind of content, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.